tonight in ABC premiere presentation. You're marvelous. He was crowned king of the outrageous. Wonderful. He was crowned the ultimate showman. It's trash. It's vicious. You're telling me the show is canceled. Well, I don't need you. Where the rumors end, the truth begins. Joanne and I are engaged. We're going to be married. They're just trying to push me out and break me away from you. The only authorized look at this entertainment legend, Liberace, next. The following dramatization of Liberace's life is based on his personal recollections, interviews, and newspaper and magazine materials. me over. I didn't get dressed like this to go unnoticed. Huh? You like this one? Huh? Yeah, it's one of my favorites. It's not the loudest outfit in my wardrobe, but it's the most expensive. Oh, yeah. You know why? Because of the buttons. Mm -hmm. They're real diamond buttons. In fact, the buttons cost more than the suit, but I couldn't come out here in just the buttons. <laughs> Hoax me. <laughs> Well, you know, every time I wear this outfit, I think of what Mae West once said. Too much of a good thing is wonderful. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to play some more for you right after the intermission. But right now, I'm going to step out and slip into something a little more spectacular. Okay? Thank you. Give me the dressing room. What? What is it, then? I'm just tired. Did it show? Do you think they could tell? No. You look great. Uh, Terry, give me my robe and a cigarette, would you? Oh, that ratty old thing. God, Lee, it's these better days. Why don't you throw it away? I can't do that. It understands me. So, are you going to give up, Lee? What's really the truth here? What people are saying or what you've always believed? Things in your life never just happen. The truth is, you visualize them into being. You saw them. You made them happen, right? Okay. Energy's down. You look a little thin. The color's rotten. So what? 
Huh? All that changes. As soon as you hit those footlights and see that audience, that's the truth. You owe those people a show, Lee. Now give them everything. Even if it's all that you got. Lee. 20 minutes. Oh, thank you, John. Lee. Are you okay? I'm fine. I'm just a little tired. Well, you look tired. 21 shows have got to be getting to you. You push yourself too hard. You've lost weight. I'm fine. Did we break the record? They said I'd draw more than 120,000 and be the first one to gross over 2 million at Radio City. Yes, you broke the record. Lee, please. Then stop worrying, John. You know, as soon as I hit that stage, I'll be fine. Now, both of you, let me have a few minutes alone, okay? Terry, somebody close the lid on the spinet. It's like closing the lid of a coffin. issue. Men are men. It doesn't make any difference sometimes. There's women and there's women. Nature doesn't know the difference when the heat is on. It's the music, Walter. 17 years of scholarship, the best. You could have been a virtuoso, but it'll never happen. You play garbage, you become garbage. I did it for you and Mom. Oh. Nobody has a job. I had to take what I could get. Yes. But this, though. You know why I don't get work? Huh? Because I have pride in what I do. The music I play. In Italy, the French horn is hard for symphony. But here it is for marching band and to play in the dark for pictures that move. I say no more to these things. My son should say no. Not bring shame to the family. Dad. I didn't mean that. Listen, you played two dances at weddings. 
no more gutter music. Ha capito? Yes. I'm going to play what I want. What the people want to hear. I, I need to make people happy. That's what I'm going to do, George. So what's her name? Whose name? The not-so-nice girl in the Madrid club. Miss B. Haven. Da 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 I'm happy on the shelf. <laughs> Ain't misbehaving. I'm saving my love for you. <laughs> Walter, you dog you. <laughs> Mom, why are we doing this? I can't look at you anymore. Yes, yes, you will look. Pain is a relative of the living, Walter. Christmas is everything. And we're gonna celebrate like always. You said you couldn't come because you had business. You didn't say it was with another woman. I don't have to explain anything to you. It's between your mother and me. You owe me respect. No matter what I said or did, I'm your father. You couldn't even wait till after Christmas. You broke her heart in my life. Huh? My heart? It don't count. And by the way, the woman has a name, Zona. She's a cellist. And the only happiness I've had in years. Yes, Walter. Years. It was always you. You had the last word in all our lives. Nobody in this family had a prayer to go against your will. Well, I am free now. I am my own man. And I will always remember your kindness to my mother. Mom's right. We are going to celebrate like always. 
Listen to me, Mom. As God is my witness, you will never have another Christmas like this one. From this time on, they'll always be the happiest, most joyous days on Earth. Believe me, Mom. George, all Christmases to come will be our special and brightest days. Oh. at your New England Toyota ridiculous you look in that top hat. You'd never wear it again. The sophisticates, the so-called cafe society, they're just rich and drunk. I believe this is just somebody's idea of humor. It's bad humor, Lee. I'm um, just a joke, huh? Well, one of these days, I'm gonna make them stop and listen, George. I swear it. I will. Lee, you've got to, you've got to go back out there.
you besides Liberace? Uh, Lee. Lee. Well, I'll tell you, Lee. I'm an entertainment director, not a gambler, but I do play creative hunches. Like booking you on that postcard you sent me from your date in Montreal. Lee, your postcard, not a lot of clout, but I just couldn't toss it. Very novel advertising gimmick. All right. I have even better advertising ideas that I can't afford. That's my point, exactly. We're not paying you enough. Lee, you're good. I want the frontier to be your home. You think you're not paying me enough? Look, Lee, we pay Sophie Tucker $6,000 a week. But, Maxine, I'm not Sophie Tucker. That's for sure. So we'll pay you $1,500 and let you catch up. I don't know, Lee. You're not just good. You're different. You're not just good. You're different. Bring him in now. Come on, Mom. Well, here it is, Mom. Our new home. I'm making the dream come true, just like I promised. We'll be together, a family again. I don't know, Walter. I, I think it's too big. No, it's not too big. You'll get used to it. And, Mom, I left Walter back in Milwaukee. It's Lee, remember? Yes. Lee. Yes. Oh, this is the beginning of a, a whole new life. 
a career that's going straight up through the clouds. I can see it. All you? Yeah. Huh. And when do I get thrown out with Walter Valentino Liberace? Never. This is all for you. Come on, I'll show you the swimming pool. <laughs> what can I do with the swimming pool? <laughs> the most water I ever been in is a small little tub with four little feet on it. And do we need all this? I worry, Walter. God knows I worry. Why is the swimming pool shaped like a piano? You can't play it. Oh, it's what I do. It's kind of a, a signature of my profession in our home. Well, beautiful. But from so much change, we have too much. God loves the poor and humble best. Mom, God loves us all. Success is not wrong. I think God would frown if I didn't use my gift. Not your talent that upsets me. It's what comes with it. I don't like Hollywood. There's too many parties and some of these people are strange. I haven't met one Polish person since I got here. <laughs> these people don't understand the old ways, values. I don't trust them. People are people. Yeah, perhaps California is a little different, but it'll get better, I promise. It'll get better for me. Now listen, if you find a nice girl and settle yourself down... I will, believe me, but it's not exactly something you can force. You can't just order someone up, Mom, even in California. You can try. A little push, go to church. Nice girl, go to church. on the street outside my house. You think I'm a tomboy? Oh, I, I think you're a pretty good outfielder. Well, I'm really a dancer. I just play ball to keep my brother nervous. I think I'm better than he is. <laughs> What's your name? Joanne Rio. Come on, I'll walk you home. So do you know who I am? I've seen you in concert. And what did you think? I guess... I've never seen anyone like you before. When will you be going back on tour? Oh, soon. There'll always be tours, but there's something new. Something I've, I've never done, maybe coming along. You see all those TV antennas? That's my audience. All those wonderful, ordinary people. You see, they've asked me to do a TV show, and I want to, because I know once I get the chance to look straight into that camera, the country, the whole country will know me for a friend. George would like to thank you, too. Wouldn't you, George? 
Well, George expresses his appreciation with his violin. Right, George? Well, it's time to go already. I don't know what happens to the time. I wish it could be longer, but I'll be looking forward to next week when we can be together again. Until then. from, Jamie? It sounds like Texas. You got it. Well, it's a little town you probably never heard of. <laughs> Doesn't that make you feel kind of funny? Funny? Why? Well, all the rest of us are drinking out of glass, and you're drinking out of silver. You have an L on yours. Well, you can't have everything. <laughs> Come on, George. I want to show you something. I just got it. This is a genuine Louis XV porcelain court table. It was owned by a real Indian Maharaja. It cost me a fortune. This is a lamp from a 20th century garage sale that cost me three dollars. I'm gonna do it. I've gotta do it. Do what? Come play games with me, but you know what I'm talking about. The Harpo Marks, the violin. I'm sick of it. Did I ask you to be a silent partner? What partner? People think I'm a mute. Well, I tried to get you to talk, haven't I? You just wouldn't. Besides, what difference does it make? Your talent, that fabulous smile, it works for both of us, George. We've broken all the records at Carnegie Hall, Madison Square Garden. The TV show has won two Emmys. It works, George. You just don't see anything. You don't listen to anybody. Now, I want to try things on my own. A pizza business. There's nothing wrong with a sideline. It's a decent, legitimate business, and I can still play the fiddle. Have a career on my own. I see. No, this is Jane talking, not you. Stop bringing her into this, all right? This is between us. Please, don't do this, George. Lee, I have to. I'm sorry. So why'd you leave Texas, Jamie? Doing nothing with my life, I guess. Funny part is, moving out here didn't solve that problem. 
I still miss my home sometimes. I miss my mom. See, if, if she knew that I was here at this party with my feet in this pool talking to you, she wouldn't believe it. She like me? She a fan? God, big, big fan. She loves everything you do. She talks about you all the time. She watches your show every week. Now, how about you? Well, I kind of slide into the living room when your show is on and check you out. <laughs> I always think you're great, though. But no man in Texas would admit to watching your show. <laughs> Being a Liberace fan in high school was... Well, I've always kind of been invisible, but I didn't want to disappear altogether. You follow what I mean? I sure do. Come on. Let's take a ride. I guess I must. Why? Did what I said before hurt your feelings? Oh, no, no, not at all. No, doesn't the Bible say something about uh, truth being the bread of sincerity? Believe me, I can use all I can get. I mean, truth, not bread. <laughs> well, then, can I tell you something else that's true? Sure. When I came to your party tonight, I... I was in a real bad mood. My friend had to pull me out of bed. I was feeling down. And now I feel a lot better. Kind of. I feel better, too. What do you do for a living? I'm a commercial artist. I freelance. You've seen my show. Tell me. What do you think about my act? The music I play, the clothes I wear? Some people feel that the costumes aren't dignified. Oh, no, I think your costumes are really great. Powerful and everything. But... But what? Go on. Well, you're different from any pianist I've ever seen. You're kind of special. For instance, you're real funny. I think you got this great sense of humor. And I think you ought to use it more. Listen to me telling you what's right. How'd you like to do some work for me? Uh, I'm not offering you a full-time job, but something like a, a, a trade ad for Variety. Lee, I swear to God, I wasn't looking for anything. Well, don't you think I know that? That's why we're here, talking. We really don't know each other very well. Yet, but some of the things you said... So, James, you going to do this job for me or not? Sure. Great. <laughs> Can't seem to get this cork out. I've got a rubber thumb or something. <laughs> oh, oh that almost put my eye out. Oh, Lee. The glasses are plastic. Oh, no. How uncivilized. But then, must we always be civilized? Of course. All right. You hold, I'll pour, and we'll pretend they're crystal. <laughs> to my lovely, all-grown-up little outfielder. When I lived across the street, I could hear you playing at night. Oh, I hope I didn't give you bad dreams. Oh, no. It was beautiful. It was so really beautiful. And I could... What? Well, you can tell me. I've heard just about everything, Joanne. Well, this is kind of personal. Well, I think I can take it. Well, the music was different every night. Maybe... Don't be angry with me, but... 
Maybe like you, I can hear how you felt while you were playing. Happy, unhappy, but always, always incredible. I never closed my eyes until the last note. How could I be angry at that? Beautiful compliment. You know what I love about you? I can talk to you. I think you like me. Just me. Are we having champagne conversations at a doorway in the morning? Or is this for real? It's just another announcement. You make them all the time. Grandchildren don't get their own words. Mom, can't you just say congratulations? It's what you've wanted all along. I even found her in church. Are we talking about the full Catholic mass and all the rules that go with it? Congratulations. Honestly. I hope... Excuse me, I think something went down the wrong way. You are going to have grandchildren, Mrs. Liberace. I hope lots of them. Yeah. Maybe you just weren't expecting this, but quite simply, I love Lee. I know I'm young, but I can sew and cook and knit. I'm sure you're a fine young person. <laughs> It's just that I don't know you very well. Nothing, really. Except that you're Italian. Yes, I am. You know, Lee and I have so much in common. We're traditional, old values. And he's such a gentleman. He lights my cigarettes, opens doors. He even bought me orchids. It would have been so nice if you were Polish. But then I married an Italian. Big mistake. He had old values, too, but new ideas. Well, keep talking it over, ladies. You'll work it out. It's been impossible. But I've been wanting to tell you for a while. Joanne has turned my life around. I think the world of her. I, I love her, Eddie. Don't say any more, Lee. I got a lot on my mind. I'm just gonna have to listen, right? What's wrong? Look, this is too painful to drag out. I, uh, I'm gonna be as direct and simple as I possibly can. Yeah, that's the only fair way to do it. <laughs> fair way to do what? This isn't going to be a wedding. Wait a minute. Look, I thought about it long and hard. I hoped it would work out, but uh, it just isn't to be. See, Joanne is my daughter. And I had to do some digging. Don't make me say any more, Lee. I, I don't want to hurt you. But how can, how can you take our life together away because of some vicious innuendo? Look, I'm sorry. Hmm? I really am. I'm sorry. But Joanne, 
wants children. I want grandchildren. You see it my way? I don't think that would ever happen. I believed in her. Well, you're a very trusting man, Lee. <laughs> it's hard to realize that you can't just be who you are. Well, she denies she did anything wrong. Uh, Jamie, I just don't want to talk about it anymore. Please, just leave me alone. should be me than somebody else. What's the matter? You look awful. I got an advanced copy of this. It'll be on the stands tomorrow morning. A handsome press agent thought his job was to boost Liberace's concert. A sour note came in. And the candelabra kid decided to turn public relations into private relations. Well, why would anyone want to write that about me? Well, they've been hinting around about that kind of thing for years, Lee. But never anything like this. And me seduce that press agent? I never did that. I mean, how, so how could they write this story? Well, they can print anything they damn like. And it's getting worse. It's not only you, Frank Sinatra, suing Look Magazine. Well, this story's a lie. Trash, vicious. I'm not going to let them get away with this, Jamie. I'm going to fight back. I want you to call my attorney right now. Now? It's Christmas Eve. I don't care. I'm not going to let them destroy my life's work. I don't care if it takes every nickel I've got. But I'm going to make a point. I guarantee you, this will never happen to anyone else as long as I live.
Police are trying to find them right now. Why would anybody want to hurt me? What did I do? You didn't do anything. This is all because of me. Whoever did this has a mind as twisted as that confidential magazine article. But I'm going to put them out of business. Why do they write these things about you, Lee? I've heard them before. I don't understand. I've never understood that. Breaks my heart. Mom. Don't listen to them. Don't believe them. Just believe in me. You gotta believe in me. I think she's tired. You two ought to really let her get him some sleep. Wasn't it wonderful of George and Jane to come back from vacation because of me? <laughs> Maybe you boys can get back together now, huh? For your mother. We'll talk about it, Mom, but... Right now, you rest. You're a good girl, Jane. You're good for George. You know I love him, Francis. Do you believe these things they write about, Lee? No, no, of course not. But... But what? Well, he's had his mind so much on his work lately, he just hasn't had enough time for girls. Maybe... Maybe he just needs a little encouragement. The whole show has changed since I was there. Well, I, I didn't even know it anymore. Well, I've uh, tried to loosen up things a little. Loosen up things a little? Uh-huh. Is that what you call it? Mm -hmm. Me. Making fun of me is one thing. But you're making fun of everything. Now, your sponsors are banks, funeral parties. People who thought they were buying into a show with dignity. It's a family medium, Lee. And those costumes, I... I'm sorry, Lee. It's just... It's getting, uh... Embarrassing. Is that the word you're looking for? Well, it's just not the right kind of image. Stand by the cue, Lee. In five, four, three... I'm going to play some more for you, but right now I'd like you to hear some words about those nice people we call our sponsors. Shady Cove Funeral Parlors. Tender loving care is our business. And North Side Tuna, the true taste of Alaska. And if any of you mothers in the audience have new tuna recipes, I hope you'll send them on to my mother. Oh, but seriously, folks, my sponsor, Shady Cove Funeral Parlors, tells me that in the wills of the deceased, Debussy's Claire de Lune 
is more often requested as accompaniment to interment than any other number in my repertoire. What? Just like that, I'm canceled. You're telling me the show is canceled. Why? Dull and boring? Well, that's loud and clear. Like, you're the ones who told me to change my format, my costume, go square, and, and now you're telling me it's dull? Well, of course it's dull. Oh, I knew I was right. I knew. I never should have trusted you guys. Oh, I'm, I'm sure you're sorry. I mean, this is just perfect. This is just what I could have expected from you. You don't even have the decency to come down here and tell me yourself. Well, I don't need you. Something you can do for me. Son, go upstairs. Someone wants to talk to you. Someone upstairs? In your room. Go. Go. You'll see. Well, okay. All right. I'll see what you're up to. to give thanks for what you got, not throw it all away on parties. The way you spend your money. Look, Mom, I know you're thinking about all those lean years, but that's well in the past. This is the 70s. We're on a roll. We're back on top. Be happy. Oh, you think this makes me happy? We just got back from Las Vegas. Today we're here, tomorrow, someplace else. All right, what would make it? Any place, anything, it's yours. You want to go back to Palm Springs? No. Really? You like the simple life, huh? Oh, you think that's funny? Let me tell you something. I want to stay in one place now. And I like those people. They're nice. They're real. And the weather. And you know, Lee, I like those... those one-armed one bandits. bandits. Yes. 
first of the year, any place you want in Las Vegas. Now, how about a smile? Excuse me. Your dog. Liza, baby. You like dogs? I love them more than most people I know. Look, it's really none of my business, but the dog's eyes are very cloudy and they're running very badly. I know of a cream we can get. Jamie? Why didn't uh, our vet do something? I don't know, Lee. Before I picked her up, she just kept staring at me. Poor little thing. She can't tell us. I've seen it before. I've been a vet's assistant since I was 15. But today's a holiday. Our vet's out of town. How about mine? I can get him, and he's great. And you can check him out. And I'd be there with her. If that means anything to you. The fact that you care means a great deal to me. You know, they're kind of like my children, if that's not too hard to understand. No, I understand very well. Then we'll get her well. I don't even know your name. Scott. Scott Thorson. Hi, Scott. when this damn thing is on a tape. I hate it. It's no use. I can't play this anyway. My fingers aren't long enough. Darren, don't do that. My God, what, what, what's the point? Why go on? Please. I hate it. What's the point? I know you have to leave, but could you just take a look at these program ads for the tour? Not now, Jamie, please. I just don't have the time. Oh, my baby looks so much better. Look, walk me out to the car, will you, Scott? I and mean, do you believe that, kid? I'm making my protege. I give him every advantage. It's so nice having you around, Scott. I've got the most wonderful idea. How would you like to go to work for me? Doing what? Well, you could be my secretary. But I don't type. Oh, hell, Scott. I can pay anyone to type. I need a bodyguard, a companion. Someone I can talk to, I can trust. I'll pay you $300 a week and all your expenses, and you'll be my right-hand man. Please, Scott, say yes. Wonderful. Let me give you something in advance. I want you to fly home, get your things, and come right back to Vegas.
So is this it? Uh, just two more places. Luckily, I really feel strange. I mean, it, about you buying all these things for me. Scott, I don't want to hear any more of this. You work for me now, and you need an image that goes along with your position. What the hell? Anything that gives me an excuse to shop. Where's Lee? Out shopping. He's gonna make lasagna. Oh, I don't think he's met. Jack Bird, Jamie James. Hello? Come on, Jack, I'll show you around Vegas. See you later. Lasagna, garlic bread, spinach, and salad. God, I'm starving. Lee, have you met Scott's friend? No. Well, they're taking a tour. Lee, I don't know. Jamie, you're not going to start up again, are you? Well, he doesn't look like anybody's friend to me. I don't know what he is, but he's not a friend. He came in carrying some kind of a case, and it was open. You know what was in it? Jamie, I just don't want to hear this right well, now, all right? I'm not trying to interfere with your life, Lee. It's just that I think you let people take advantage of you sometimes. Look. I don't want you or anyone else to say anything against Scott. He makes me happy. So I wish you'd all stop picking on him. Oh, Jamie, Jamie, please try to understand. I can't help myself. It's something about strays. Something about being needed. for you, Scott. I was going to tell you after dinner. What surprise? I want you to drive my new roadster in the show. In the show, Scott. Right up on stage. Jamie, showtime's in just a few minutes. Scott is in no shape to drive that car on stage. What do you mean? I just thought to him. He's perfectly fine. He is not fine, Lee. This could be dangerous. Jamie, I think you just worry too much, all right? Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. The Las Vegas Hilton is pleased to present the man that is known around the world for his candelabra and his piano, Mr. Showmanship, Liberace. to see you all here. But before I go any further, I have to find out, how would you like the entrance? Is that okay? Oh, great, great. Well, listen, I gotta tell you, this is the only roadster in creation that's been decorated with 450,000 rhinestones, so I had to go out and find me a chauffeur with as much sparkle as the car. I want you to meet my friend over there, Scott Thorson. Thank you, Scott. 
Oh, I'm glad you like the car. Boy, it really stopped traffic when I shot the Safeway. Yeah? Especially in this case. <laughs> I'm only kidding about that. Look, why don't we say goodbye to Scott now, okay? Bye-bye, Scott. We'll see you later. Thank you. Uh, no, this... This cape was designed to be worn for just one performance only. And I gotta tell you something. I was the only one there who was like it. And I gotta tell you, Majesty Queen Elizabeth, she loved it. She even felt the material. Can you believe it? Look, I'm really sorry, Lee, but it was just an accident. Well, it doesn't matter. The hotel people tell me that they're not going to let you drive the car on stage anymore. They say you were drinking, Scott. A couple of beers, that's all, I was fine. They're just trying to push me out and break me away from you. They're all jealous. I'll make up for it, be honest. chance with you on the road. Maybe it'd be better if you stayed at Harold's way until I got back. Look after the dogs, okay? I'd really appreciate it. Oh, sure, sure. That's a great proposition. You're out of the show, Scott, but just right for feeding the dogs and cleaning up their mess. My mother is seriously ill and getting worse. I think I need her now as much as she needs me. End of discussion, Scott. Are the nurses treating you all right? Nurses. What do they know? Creeping in here all the time, talking and puffing up pillows. Anything to keep an old woman from dying in peace. Do you need anything? What would make you happy? You know what really would make me happy? What? To be able to walk again with my dear family. gave Francis an awful good life. There's a poem. I remember some of it. Make, makes me think of Mom and what she expected of me. Happy he with such a mother. Faith in womankind beats with his blood and trust in all things high comes easy to him. And though he trip and fall, he shall not blind his soul with clay. Listen to any 
anyone else. I'll get you friends. And leave, Scott. Get out now. Get the hell out before I have you thrown out. Songs. I guess six gold albums mean something after all, huh? What is it? I don't understand. How could you do this? No comment. No comment, except that I intend to pursue the litigation all the way. Was there an agreement between them, Mr. Stroh? What did they agree on? There was no contract or agreement between Mr. Liberace and Mr. Thorson. The lawsuit is absurd. It was obviously filed to gain publicity. Finally, I know it is. What makes you so sure? Remember London 25 years ago? The Seti boys go home faggot? I don't think I can take that again. Please. Those were twisted, ugly people. These are fans. They don't care about palimony suits or any of that stuff. They love you. I know they do. I can always Good count evening, on you, ladies James. And gentlemen. I'm not so sure about them. The Toronto Concert Hall is pleased to present Mr. Showmanship, Liberace. the palimony claim by Thorson being dismissed? Well, I feel a lot better, obviously. I could have stopped the whole thing before it started by paying off, but that would have meant giving in. I've never given in. Over 30 years ago, I sued Confidential Magazine and won a settlement of $40,000. Do you still claim you're not a homosexual? I'm not claiming anything. I just don't happen to believe that entertainers should publicly air their sexual or political tastes. Look, I've always admitted that my act borders on drag, but I'm not a female impersonator. I have a general family audience appeal, and I don't want to develop a gay following. It's going to take many years before the family audience accepts people who are totally gay or come out on Johnny Carson. I've seen careers hurt by that kind of thing. But with a name like Liberace, which stands for freedom, I'm for anything that has the letters L-I-B in it, and that includes gay lib.
Christmas. It's a beautiful compliment. And it gives you a chance to straighten out your shorts, huh? Yeah. Oh, I've had so much fun tonight. Honestly, sometimes I'm a little ashamed to take the money, you know? But I will. No, oh, really, I have to. You know why? You remember that bank I used to cry all the way to? Yeah. Well, I bought it. It's nice. Oh, you folks make the Las Vegas Hilton one of the friendliest showrooms in town. Thank you for doing that. You're marvelous. from anemia. It's the wrong kind of diet. What kind of diet was he on? It was watermelon and very little else. Well, if that's all there is, then why the cover-up? <laughs> because of this. Look, it happens all the time with top celebrities. He lost about 35 pounds. He had a little backache problem. The doctor felt he ought to go in and have a simple checkup. Of course, he won't be giving any more interviews. No, he won't. But he asked me to relay a message to you. He says he's feeling fine. He's going on holiday. And he's working on his new book. Thank you. Wait. How come you always wear that old bathrobe when you have so many nice, silky ones hanging in the closet? Those others belong to Liberace. What did you want to talk about? After all these years, I have just one regret. You know what that is, Jamie? What? I've never had children. Oh, I know I say that the dogs are my children. But I'll never really know what it's like to have a daughter, take her on the walks, read her books. I know how you feel, Lee. I'm going to miss out on all that stuff myself. Jamie, do you know what the booking people have told me? That if I don't start making some decisions on these dates for the 87 season, if I don't plan a normal schedule, the press is going to say I've got AIDS. AIDS? Mm -hmm. Why in the hell would they say something like that? Well, I don't know. Oh, you know how these rumor mills work. That's why they want me to go on Carson, to show everybody that I'm okay. Well, I think that stinks. 
I don't see why you have to prove anything to anybody. Christmases go by. Always happy when I hear. Help me with this, will you, Jamie? Sure. Yeah. Hey, are you sure you're up to this tour? You know how Radio City can be. Oh, I'm looking forward to it. I love the music hall. But I promise, just as soon as this tour is over, we'll start cutting back. Okay. I mean, what the hell? I didn't want to be the richest piano player in the graveyard. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. Jamie, this is a wonderful collage. <laughs> so many memories. Lee, you don't have to go to New York, do you? Oh, yes, I do, Jamie. I mean, whatever my defects and weaknesses, I'm not a quitter. As long as the people want me, if I'm still breathing, I'll be there for them. Look, if I'm going to die, it might as well be on stage.
wonderful ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for making this whole I'd like to be remembered as a kind and gentle soul who made the world a little better place to live in because I had lived in it.